Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. As you can see, down in Brixham Harbour. And uh, I thought I'd just concentrate on taking one photograph this morning. I posted a panorama of the buildings opposite on Facebook last week. And so many of you liked it, I thought, why not come down and show you all how I took the photograph. So it was a panorama made up of maybe six or seven shots. So let's get into it and I'll show you how it was done. So as you can see, first thing in the morning as the sun comes up, it shines on the buildings around the harbour. Really nice image. A few vapour trails in the sky, which is a bit of a shame. I might leave them in, as they do look quite dram dramatic. You can see how they sort of fan out, which doesn't look too bad. There's some really nice reflections on the water. I'm not going to try and do a long exposure to smooth out the water at all. But what I will do is use a circular polarizer just to take some of the uh, sheen off the water and make sure you can see the buildings. So once I've found a composition, I've got myself in the right place. I've set the tripod up and the first thing to do is just make sure that it's level so that when you move the camera around, it's uh, going to be level. I've got the camera in portrait mode and I'm planning to take maybe six or seven shots panning around left to right and um, overlapping each shot like this by about a third so that when I stitch them together the uh, software has a good chance of putting them all together. Settings wise I've got an aperture of uh, f11 that will get everything in focus that's probably the optimum for this camera well actually between sort of f8 and f11 if I go any higher to sort of f16 f18 the uh, image won't be as sharp and if I go any lower with a larger aperture obviously the depths of field will be uh, shallower and I won't get everything in focus front to back the next thing is uh, ISO so I've gone as low as I can this camera goes down to ISO 50 and at the moment that's given me a shutter speed of 1 8th of a second and I'll play around with the histogram let's have a look at that there we go there's the histogram I really want it in the middle I don't want any blown out highlights up here and no deep shadows so I'm going to focus right in the middle there I'm using back button focusing that will set it for the whole image I'm not going to change anything as I move the camera around and we'll just take the shots from left to right what I will do is just move the camera around watching the histogram making sure that there are no blown out highlights so I think I'm going to take a shot about there, just move it around. Yeah, really nice. Okay, let's take the images. Just before I start, maybe one more thing to mention is uh, just bookend your shots by taking a photograph with your hand in front of the lens. That'll make it easier in post-processing when you're stitching them together. Wow. 
Okay, let's get those images back to the computer and uh, see how to stitch them together. So, back home and I've uh, downloaded the images onto my laptop. Before I start, sorry for the surfboard growing out of my head. The room really isn't set up for vlogging. Anyway, let me show you how I'm going to stitch these images together. So if you're already a keen photographer, you may already have software that you use to do this with. Um, probably something like Adobe Lightroom. I'm using Capture One Pro. Don't dismay, if you don't have any software currently, you can always look for some uh, free versions on the web. I'll just show you a couple of free pieces of software that I used before I paid a subscription to Capture One. So firstly, let's look at uh, Hugin. Nice free piece of software that just stitches images together to make a panorama. All you have to do is load the images. I've already put some images in a folder which I'm just going to select and drag in. And you can see straight away it's put them in order. And I'm just going to choose to align the images. This takes a little while. But as you can see, let's quickly put those together. I'm just going to straighten the image. And there you go. All you have to do is export it and you're away. Next, let's have a look at GIMP. Now, although it has a very strange name, what it actually is, is very similar to Photoshop. So you can drag images in. Let's just go and look for one. I'll just drag one in for the uh, group of panorama shots. So drag it in, into the workspace. And then similar to Photoshop, you can use layer masks and do all sorts to the image. But I'll let you search on YouTube and you can find out how to use that software. Okay, let's go back to uh, Capture One and have a look at the panorama. So, with the images in Capture One, let's have a quick look at them. Just going to roll through them. And maybe let's uh, look to see how sharp they are. Not bad at all. But they are a little bit dark. Especially the water in the foreground. So let's make a slight adjustment. Let's just bring the shadows up a bit. Just to bring this foreground up a bit. Yeah, that's about right. However, that's just one of the images, so what you're going to have to do is make sure you make the same adjustments to each photograph before you try and stitch them together, otherwise it will look very odd indeed. So, that's the adjustments made to all of them. So I'm just going to turn off the viewer so you can just see all six images. Next thing I'm going to do is select all of them and then find the uh, stitch to panorama tool and it's already started generating a preview and you can see in the top left hand corner that there's a uh, different projections you can choose. So I've uh, picked on the Panini projection which you'll see I think gives me the uh, best sort of representation sorry, of uh, what I was looking at when I was taking the photographs. As you can see it takes a little while just to generate but there you go. 
and then of course you can choose some of the other projections just to see what they look like. There's a cylindrical one. But I think I prefer the original. And once it's uh, you've chosen the right one, then just hit the stitch button and away she goes to generate the actual final image. So, there's the final image. So just for speed, I'm not going to do too much for this. I'm firstly going to crop it. I think let's choose uh, 1 by 3. And then I'll just adjust where the uh, houses are. You might want them in the middle or you might want to try the rule of thirds. I think the most important thing is uh, looking around the edges. If you can see on the left hand side I've got these masks that are reflected in the water. I really want to get all of those in. So I think that uh, crop is about right. What I'm also going to do is just use the alignment tool just to straighten up the image. I must have uh, not had the camera completely uh, level when I was taking the panorama. But as you can see, it's done quite a good job. Well, did you spot my schoolboy error? There I am levelling up the top of the tripod and then moving the whole of the ball head rather than just the top, which was level. And then I'm just going to look in closely just to make sure that the whole image is stitched together properly and I can see you can't see the joins basically. And I think it's done a pretty good job. Anyway, let's have a look at the final images. This was the first one I took. As you can see, the sun's only just coming up, so there's some nice warm light on the houses, but the water still looks very dark. And I haven't done too much to this photograph, apart from bring up the shadows a little bit. I like the composition. Really nice. But as I was taking some more panoramas, I decided with this one to take the full length shot. So camera in portrait mode. And this uh, is more or less all of the six or seven shots, top to bottom, side to side. And I just managed to get the two swans in at the bottom corner and the cloud all in frame without uh, cutting off anything at the edges. I then took the same image, but I've uh, played around with this as it was uh, sunrise. What I've done is warmed up the right hand side of the photograph where the sun is coming from and put a radial mask there. And then on the left hand side, I've actually, actually lightened up to make the water and the sky look a bit more even. This is probably my favourite. And lastly, I thought why not try a black and white image. With this amount of light and the reflections in the water, I thought it would look very good. I maybe could have cropped it in a little bit on the left hand side. You can see the boat just uh, cut off at the edge there. Or even extended it just to make sure I got the whole boat in inside the image. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, I think that's it for today. Thanks for joining me again. I know it was uh, more for the photographers, but the rest of you out there, hopefully you enjoyed the scenery. Anyway, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the video it doesn't cost anything give me a like because it really helps the channel and i'll see you again next week but for now cheerio